Hey guys, this is Mike Chen. I am in the downtown Bori area of Osaka, often considered the heart and soul of the city. Look around, it's just bustling right now. Along the downtown Bori Gawa Canal, there are tons of shops, theaters, and of course, food. And that's what brings me here today. So let's go exploring. first food item of the night, takoyaki. This is famous in Osaka because this city is where this popular dish originated. And this particular stall is really popular because supposedly they still utilize the traditional method of making these awesome octopus balls. You know, the first time I had takoyaki, I, I thought this, the stuff on top was, was still alive. I didn't realize it was slices of dried fish. I thought, you know, I heard octopus. I just thought it was alive. <laughs> that seemed really stupid, but yeah, I was kind of stupid. Oh. Oh. I give this octopus ball eight thumbs up. Oh, that's satisfying. I can definitely taste the green onions and the pickled ginger inside. And on the outside, you got a little bit of mayo, takoyaki sauce, which tastes kind of like Worcester sauce. So I guess you could kind of say it's a big, fluffy, chewy, gooey sauce covered hush puppy with an octopus surprise inside. I saw this on Facebook, these ginormous uh, cotton candies. And I don't know, the, the kid in me really wanted one since I'm grown up now and I have my own money, I can actually get one without asking my parents and them saying no. Also what's intriguing is normally cotton candy to me just tastes like cotton candy. It's just kind of sweet and cotton-y. But this supposedly has three different flavors. The top one is supposedly grape, middle is supposed to be lemon, and the bottom is supposed to be cider. Let's start with whatever doesn't collapse this whole cotton candy. Cider. Huh. That's pretty yummy. I want to, yet I also don't want to just shove my face into it. This middle part is supposed to be lemon. It's quite lemony. Huh. Am I missing out or have I just always gotten like regular flavor cotton candy in my life? This is actually kind of fun. I haven't had cotton candy in like 10 years and I forgot that you can kind of pretend you're eating like pieces of cotton and somehow the cotton is melting in your mouth. I imagine. This is the most famous kushikatsu place in this area. Look at the line. That, that, that's not the line. This is the line here. Now, if you're not familiar, kushikatsu are skewers of meats and vegetables that are deep fried. And they are different than tempura. The tempura is usually covered with uh, water blazed flour and eggs, and kushikatsu is usually covered with breadcrumbs. Also, there's a really interesting way and etiquette of how to eat this. So I'm gonna show you guys that inside. They situated me upstairs. When I first came in here, I thought people were smoking everywhere because there's smoke everywhere. But that's just smoke from the oil frying up all the goodies. So here's the etiquette of eating kushikatsu. They're gonna give you dipping sauce, and the dipping sauce is gonna be communal. So it's usually sitting on your table. And what you don't do is you do not double dip. You don't double dip, you don't triple dip, you don't quadruple dip, you dip only once. But in case you're a horrible dipper and you made your first attempt and you realize you didn't get enough sauce. Well, that's what the cabbage is for. You can use this as a spoon to spoon more sauce on your kushikatsu and after you're done, eat it because it helps with your digestion. This is the combo I got because it looks like it literally has everything. All right, this is so exciting. He, he went over um, what everything is. Of course, they all kind of look the same to me. I don't mean to be a kushikatsuist, but yeah, literally they're all breaded and kind of look the same to me except for, I know this is shrimp and I know this is sausage and the rest of these, I'm just gonna taste my way through them. Let's start with this beautiful looking thing. That was mochi. Huh. The sauce is very vinegary. The sauce works very well with the mochi because the mochi is so thick and dense. And then it's fried in oil, so the sauce does a lot to cut through all that. Next up, no idea what this is, but there's two of them. I, I think they might be eggs. This is awesome. Oh man. Fried quail eggs. The fried breadcrumb shell was so nice and crispy. And the egg, of course, soft and tender. That's just such a nice contrast. I have no clue what this is. I'm, I'm guessing asparagus, green beans, okra. Asparagus. Oh. Oh, that is great. I'm in love with that nice crispy shell. It gives a superb crunch. Then you break through it and you get that tender bite of whatever is inside. And I'm really excited about this next item. This is, is a cheese stick. This is a fried cheese stick. Let's dunk this thing in the sauce. Oh, 
Oh, that was the most insane cheese stick ever. That was so beautiful and melty. I was hoping they had a cheese on a stick because you're frying all sorts of things. You're frying vegetables, you're frying seafood, you're frying chicken. You gotta fry cheese. Next up, I don't know what that is. That looks like a corn dog. Let me, mini corn dog. Try this out. Mm. Yeah, that's an oyster. Honestly, I, I don't dig this. Oysters are, are so oceany to me. I had some oysters that were really good, namely uh, what I had at the fish market in Tokyo that was remarkably awesome. But this one, it was just, it just a little too fishy for me. Again, mystery stick. This I love. This is pork. Um, that is delicious. That pork was so juicy and tender. That tasted like a fancier version of a pork katsu. Fancier, less oily, better dip in sauce. Fry right, lollipop. That's a brand new ball. I almost want to double dip this because this thing is dense. You definitely need more sauce. Hang on a second. Seven skewers in. Excuse me, guys. I need to aid my digestion a little bit. This one, I know. I mean, this is like gift wrapping a hammer. I know this is a lotus root. That is so crispy on the inside, and wow. It's one of my favorite items so far. You get a double crunch with this. The crunch of the bread coating, then the crunch of the lotus. Then you get that delicious, sweet lotus flavor. Oh, I feel like that piece didn't really even need the sauce at all because the lotus brings its own sweetness to the game. Chicken karage. This is basically fried chicken. To be honest, the chicken's a little tough. It's good, flavorful, tough. I mean, this chicken could whoop you in the back alley. Mm. Oh, this is love. This is happiness. This is joy. This is a festive Thanksgiving dinner and a white Christmas morning all wrapped up in one. This shrimp is so sweet and tender. I feel like it's got way more texture. Also, for some reason, it is not as oily to me as a tempura. And that could be because of the sauce, but it just doesn't feel and taste as oily in my mouth. Finally, last one. Chicken nugget on a steak, not sure. I'm not exactly sure what that was. It tasted like fish cake with cheddar cheese inside. Let's go with that. 15 skewers down and I'm still pining for more. But the night is young, got a lot of food in front of me. I'm just gonna go ahead and nibble on this little leftover breadcrumb here. <laughs> Oh, it's so cold right now. I can't believe I just got ice cream, but I, I had to because there's a vendor selling a melon bread. Now, melon bread, contrary to the name, does not have any melons in here. It just kind of looks like a melon, kind of looks like a cantaloupe. And what they do here is scoop a ginormous amount of ice cream, in this case, green tea ice cream, into your bread. So it's gonna leak because the bread is hot. I gotta take a bite right now. Guys, take a look. You are staring at beauty right now. Oh, look, I gotta finish this because it's dripping everywhere. Hang on a second. That was deeply delicious and satisfying. It does sort of taste like the pineapple bread, except for this one is much, much lighter and less flaky on top. And the little square pieces you see on top, they taste like a little, I don't know, sweet crackers or cookies. But that food item comes with a time limit because you got the ice cream, they got the hot bun, and I think you gotta eat that in like three minutes where it becomes a melty pile of soggy mess. But I thought it tasted great. Hot, crunchy bun with nice creamy ice cream on the inside. It's like a hot ice cream sandwich. Feel really good in my stomach, I'm sure. You know what this reminds me of? Have you guys ever seen that anime, uh, Rama One Half? And there's a girl in there that makes okonomiyakis and she would fight with like a giant one of these and throw like smaller ones at shurikens. So yes, in the right hands, these could also be used as weapons of death. And you get to, and you're eating it on the stove top, so this thing never gets cold. Look at this multi layer of awesomeness. Inside this, we got some scallions, egg of course, pancake, shrimp, pork, squid, and beef tendon all mixed together. This is like the ultimate melting pot, no prejudice here. Oh. This is just delightful. Mm. This is really just a collection of beautiful flavors. You got surf and turf, you got veggies, you got egg, you got crepe. I think all it's missing is just a cherry on top. This thing is super tender on the outside, not overly seasoned. So although everything is mixed together, you can taste every single ingredient. I just asked for some chili powder. I think I'm gonna do some upgrade on my okonomiyaki. 
Even better. Even better. Because there's so much eggy, doughy, fatty ingredients in there, I really felt like there needed to be some sort of acid, some sort of spice to cut through all that. And those chili peppers really did the trick. And since I'm in Japan, I gotta get one of these stuffed fish things. Come here, baby. Oh, this is filled with uh, what tastes like sweet potato. Biggest difference between this and the ones I have in the stage is that the outside shell here is so much thinner. A lot toastier, a lot less sweet than the ones I've had in the States. Also, they were selling this little ice cream sandwich thing. I'm just gonna crush it. There we go. This I love. Mm. Tastes like vanilla ice cream. The ice cream itself is not very creamy. It's a little more refreshing. Mm. Actually, super refreshing. It's almost like a vanilla icy. And the wafers are really creamy. This is kind of like a transformation of a wafer cone. Except here, every mouthful, you get ice cream in the shell. Simple, yet deliciously satisfying. Wow, what a great food day. The only thing I can say is I love this place. There's so many things to see, so many things to do, so many things to eat. I couldn't even get to everything. You guys see that huge crab right over there? Yeah, I wanted to eat that, but that was sold out at like 5 o'clock. So I'll be back tomorrow. Stay tuned. I'm back at Downtown Bori. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. Less crowded, but this place is still bustling. I told you we're going to go eat that guy, so let's do it. Freshly charred grilled king crab for breakfast. I'm ready. Ooh, right away, I can tell this meat is gonna be succulent. Look how easily the meat is coming out and see how juicy this thing is? Oh, that smell of crab meat fresh from the char grill. Oh my God. Oh man, how did it get so juicy? It's almost like they took a syringe and injected juice into this crab. The meat is sweet like candy. I swear this crab ate only apples his whole life. This is by far the tenderest king crab I've ever had. And I've had a lot of king crab. In Vegas, all they serve is king crab. They serve it to you cold, they steam it for you. I've even had these stir fried. None of it comes close to how tender and sweet this is. Oh, look at this piece. This is the part where the legs connect. There's some good meat in here. And by far the biggest chunk. Look at that. Holy crab. Guys, you might be thinking, okay, I've had king crab before, it's just okay. You never had king crab like this. Fantastic char grill taste. The meat, I cannot tell you how gentle, silky smooth, and soft it is. And that subtle sweetness. All I've gotta say is, I'll hail the king. I don't wanna waste a single morsel of this. I'm like, standing here in public, people are staring at me, I'm just, go to town, this crab, absolutely the best thing I've had here by far. I was there at 5 p.m. yesterday and they told me everything was sold out. Now I know why. I'm sorry for being so barbaric, but this is indeed that incredible. All right, I think that's all of it. Wait, wait, hang on a second. And I'm good to chop it. And everybody is staring, so I'm just gonna go about my way. I came across this Japanese uh, Swiss champion, Matari Puri. Puri. I don't know what a Puri is. I'm gonna find out. This looks just like a like typical pudding. Oh, that's majestic. It's a little gooey, sort of watery when you get towards the bottom. Oh, that's like eating velvet. You know, if velvet was sweet, delicious, and edible. I almost feel like I could take a straw and suck this all up. I hope they didn't come to take away my pudding because I'll defend this with my life. One thing you can definitely taste in here is the quality of the milk. Definitely one of the softest, smoothest, creamiest pudding I've ever had. Such a wonderful creamy flavor and the texture. You don't even feel like you need to swallow it. It just kind of runs down your throat. That's how gentle and delicate it is. And even though this is the first time I had it, I'll know I'm gonna miss this when I leave Japan. First of all, this menu is on like a like a 20 pound diesel. This thing is gigantic and it is heavy. So here, that's the thing you gotta try, the freshly baked mini cheese tart. Oh, takoyaki. Oh, this all looks really, really good. This is the matcha cheesecake, freshly baked, fresh. They said it's still hot on the inside. <laughs> okay, okay. 
Oh, that is deep pretty satisfying. Actually, I couldn't tell you it's a cheesecake because I think the matcha flavor overwhelms any cheesy flavor that this has. But it's so wonderfully warm and gooey on the inside. Oh, it's fabulous. Let's try some with uh, ice cream. That's insane. If you guys are ever here in Japan, come to this place and try this. I think that's it for my time here at Don't Tonbori. How fun is this place? There's so many things to do and see, and of course, so much food to eat. I wish I could have more time here. I actually wish I could bring a second stomach to this place. Unfortunately, I have to leave Osaka, but in the wise words of the Terminator, I'll be back. Also, if you enjoyed Dance Dance Revolution and you want to see an incredible performance that I had with the cash here last night, go to my vlog channel. The link is down below. So until we eat again, see you later.